morning. I'm Steve Eisenberg, and I'm going to be talking a bit about uh, video production. And uh, I started this a while ago. I first started using uh, DaVinci, no, not DaVinci, uh, Sony Vegas Pro, and uh, Sony Vegas, and then I went to Sony Vegas Pro so I could do multi-camera editing, but then I found that on my Windows machine, it was causing uh, repeated uh, blue screen crashes. That's what caused me actually to move over to a, a Macintosh machine. And I'm using a MacBook Pro to do my editing now. The software I'm going to talk about is uh, DaVinci Resolve. And it works on MacBook machines. It works on Windows machines. And it works on Linux machines. It's available for all of them. And the price is uh, quite affordable. So um, unless anybody has any questions, I might as well get started. What does affordable mean? Free. Uh, good. That, that, that's on my budget. Yeah, that's my kind of affordable. That's for sure. I'm going to share my screen uh, and go over a few things. When you're looking around for video software, I went to, I did a, a, a search. And I found that there's a bunch of video software that's available, such as this one right here, which is Adobe Premiere Pro CC. That costs $20 a month. Uh, Cyberlink, I've never heard of. Corel, I've heard of. But it said when they say check price, they're afraid to put the like pinnacle that costs $99.95. So all of these cost money. And uh, Magix, I think, is what has replaced uh, Sony Vegas Pro. But as you can see, that costs a certain amount of money. <laughs> we also have this best free video audio editing software. And there's one notable exception from here. There's OpenShot, um, VideoPad. So these are places you can go and find other alternatives. However, what I found was uh, DaVinci Resolve. And this is the place for DaVinci Resolve that uh, Sorry. tells about, OK. Um, I have a companion here. She's <laughs> going to point out all my mistakes. <laughs> I'm the Van Vanna White. How's yes, that? You're the Vanna White. Okay, yes. let me continue here. Um, so uh, one thing I found out about DaVinci mm -hmm. Resolve, it was actually recommended to me by Lex Media, that uh, this particular part right here that's free and the one that costs $300, the difference is that this does everything that I need, everything that I think most people will need, the only thing this doesn't do is it has some new features, neuro engine, I don't know what those are, multi-user collaboration. If you're working in a, on a team with a dozen people or so, all trying to produce videos, like on channel five or channel seven or one of those, then you're gonna want to use the collaboration capabilities. But in your own place, in your own house, you don't need that. If you're making 3D movies, and so forth, other plugins and so forth. So for me, it does all that I, I found that I need. And I'll get, I'm going to get into a, a demo on that fairly soon. When you're putting together videos, uh, I know some people, I think George was interested in doing uh, slideshows. I've done slideshows. Um, I'm not gonna do a slideshow this morning, but one thing you wanna have is some music for the slideshow. And um, for that, you might wanna search for free music. I mean, we're, we're trying to keep the costs down. wiki and you know because we have the computer group that tells additional upcoming meetings and so forth but on here off my start page if you come down to annoyances you see DaVinci Resolve annoyances which is basically a set of information that I've used when I'm uh, trying to accomplish certain things uh, if I want to track and blur an object or how to caption a movie I captioned one of our, uh, our presentations a few months ago and this has a set of my tips that uh, I have maintained. If you have others you'd like me to add, if you're using this, let me know. Because I put, when I find out how to do something with the uh, DaVinci Resolve, I put it in here. Steve, just information. So, yep. uh, but what it means if uh, you, you have a video and my dog's in the video and I don't want you to recognize my dog, you can, you can identify that and it will blur it throughout the video. Yep. 
automatically? Yeah, well, um, I haven't done a great deal of that, um, but, oh, wait a second, I did play with this. There's a car moving by and I wanted to blank out the license plate. So as it's moving, yes, I was able to do that. I was able to blur the license plate and as it moves, it's, it's not a trivial process, at least if it is easier than I did it, then I haven't figured out how to do it easier. Much Fair of what enough. I do, much of what I do when I'm using Resolve is stuff that I figured out. And frankly, last night, I found out a shortcut that's going to save me some time. And I'll go over that today. Okay, let's get on to uh, DaVinci Resolve here. And when you first start it out, it'll come up and it'll come up with this page here. And I won't show you all the different projects uh, with a smiling uh, Dr. Holbrow and uh, with uh, Bob Edwards talking. These are the, the different projects. I'm working on nine projects uh, apparently, and uh, including me making a, uh, a face shield from uh, leftover material I got from the supermarket. But in any event, uh, you would choose or create a new project. And what I'm using is this particular project right here. I'm gonna close it because I'm already in that project. And uh, this is, okay, let me walk you around what we have on the screen here. On the top, we have different menus. Let's see if I can move this. Yes, good, I can get that out of the way. This is the thing for controlling the screen share. Over here, we have media storage and I've chosen my directory and these are all the things in that directory. On the lower left I have bins. Now uh, you don't need to do the bins because you can copy the video directly into the timeline but I'm recommending the use of bins because bins because that way you can have a number of different projects going on at the same time and if you look at the World War II I have several dozen projects going on for example and the LCTG computer group I have many dozens of projects. So, uh, Steve, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> so the bins are basically like you have three or four things that you wanted to do, and it's a way of dumping the information into each bin yeah. uh, until you want to work up with it. Okay. So, yeah. essentially, it's a folder, a video that's, folder. Uh, very good. Thank you. Uh, that's basically what it is. You create one I did here. It's a 20, I put my date code in the demo. And then I copied from here the various things I wanted to be in down here, which is pretty much all the stuff that's here because I created, originally I created the directory and the disk and I've copied all my files there. And then I come into Resolve and I create a bin and I copy all the files there. Now, the advantage from this is that I can then right click on this and create a new timeline using this selected mm -hmm. bin. Now, before I get into that, I was telling you, this is the media storage. This is what's in that file. I can click on here and I can see what's in there. And I can, okay, if you didn't see, they march by very quickly. The point is that I can then use this top part here to choose which videos I want. Then once I get down here, I can do some inning and outing I'll tell you about in a minute to pick the parts of it that I want. Steve, can you define timeline, please? You're using sure. that and I don't know what it means. Sure. This is the uh, timeline. And this is the uh, video that I produced uh, this past weekend. And I can show you this one and then go into how I put it together. Let what, me. What is, but what does timeline mean in, in context of this application? Okay. When you're building yourself a, if you've watched Walt Disney producing cartoons, he has a storybook. He has a storybook and he has individual pictures set up. And that's his timeline because he's showing, well, uh, Mickey Mouse wakes up and he reaches over and he kisses Minnie and then they go to have breakfast and who knows what else they do, something really funny probably. But he has that and it shows the individual parts. And what we're doing is a similar thing here. We have set up a, a timeline of what's going to happen in this how long is it? Two minute and three second video. It ends on this guy right here. Okay. And uh, the timeline is where we're pulling things in to go at a certain time. What starts right here? Oh, this is a transition between one thing and another at 26 seconds, 
and two frames. That's, and there's 30 frames, 25 frames, 20, uh, or 30 frames in a second. <coughs> what is it? Okay, there's 24 frames in a second. So let, let me start again here. We currently have our media pool showing here. This is the different media from this particular bin right here. And what I can do is drag them down and put them on the timeline. On the top of the timeline are the different videos. On the bottom of the timeline are the different audios. You can see the V123, and you can see the audios. Mm -hmm. So they're all, the videos are, the audios all add together. So the fact that this is here and this is here is the same as if they're the other way around. You can see me going like this. And up here, the fact that this is on top of this, on top of this means that's the way it's added. So mm -hmm. if we take a look at this right here, we see, and let me, I'm going to zoom in here. We see that um, this is a, a video that I picked up. It's a free video clip that I found uh, after I paid for it. Okay, anyway, it's a video. And I put two things of text on it. Over here, I put this one text that says a demo productions presents. So you're saying it's layered. It's a, yes, layer is a good word. Mm -hmm. Now, if I click on this right here, there's the words right here for it on the right. So, okay. <clears throat> I would, I, I can, let me, let me uh, go back and start a new timeline and show you how we do this. Create a new timeline. We'll call it uh, 2020. Three. I'll go demo three. I create that timeline. It's based on all the media that I have showing here. <clears throat> hey, while you're here, can I ask a question? Uh, there's the top list of resources, and then there's the ones that you're actually using in this thing Down that you're here. working on. Are they copied or are they linked? I believe they're linked. Okay. So it's like a workspace. I don't think more space is taken up when you do it. It's like a workspace. Yeah. Because so, I can so have different demos with different ones so, and it's called wall relating and it's, it is, it's a link. So this is the space, Great. like a workspace. And then, so we yeah. have yeah. videos yeah. here. Mm -hmm. We're now on the media tab. So can those things be in the cloud or they have to be downloaded on your computer? Um, I would advise putting them on your computer, although I imagine you could take them from like a Dropbox or an iCloud. But, okay. but they have to be they import. have to be available for your the, the software to get at, and you copy a link to them in here. So this is not any place other than in this directory here. This shows what's in this. This is like a, a file manager, okay. right here, with some information. Down here is we're we're pointing to things in the file manager up on top. And telling them that we want to, telling it we want to put them in this in our video. So, so Steve, this is it, it, to Harry's point, I, I just was thinking about it for a minute. If it's linked, at the end of the day, it, let, let's let's go through the scenario. If it's linked, you take a snippet of video out of one of your existing videos. You want to use three seconds worth of video from video A and put it into your new production. We're going to do that in a few minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So at the end of the day, you have this video production with three seconds of this, 10 seconds of that, you know, two yes. seconds of this, yes. blah, blah, blah. Then that becomes an entity. If you publish that, at that point, it has to be copied, extracted from those videos and copied and be an independent set of bits, if you will, okay. because you There's can't another link word it. That, it's another word there, it's called render. Mm -hmm. fair, fair enough. So I think to Harry's point, Maybe during the editing process, there's links, but at some point in time, the video, the actual file content has to be extracted and knit together in the rendering process so that it is standalone. Right. Yes, that's correct. Don't you, mm -hmm. I think they call it a project, right? This is, this is a, this a, is a project. project. So, and you bring all the pieces into it's the project. So the mm -hmm. project knows what how many pieces and what they are within the project i've told it what it, i told it yeah. this, my project consists of all of these particular right mp4 movies and uh, mp3 musics and png pictures it could be jpg 
and so forth. So, Steve, Steve, have you yeah, used yeah. iMovie? I mean, this all uh, sounds like iMovie to me. It, uh, I did, but it doesn't have the depth of capabilities that I've been using. I would say, I, having looked at it, it, iMovie scratches the surface of everything you're seeing here. It just can't do it as with as many, or it's not easy to do it with as, as many uh, of the, uh, uh, you know, you, you, it's hard to have four layers of audio and, and three layers of, of video that might be there. Uh, that, but in this, is, this is certainly more capable than, than uh, iMovie because of that. More okay, so see it right here. Many times you take a look at inspector. Then <clears throat> over here we have something which is called cut. And I think that's where we go to do the, no, I don't want to use that one. I'm going to do it over here. Then we go to, over here is timeline and that shows, this is uh, demo three. If I go to demo two, I think it's empty. Uh, this one here. Yeah, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull things down and construct them here. Over here we have Fusion, I haven't used it. We have Color, I've used that to extract uh, pictures from the movie. Um, Fairlight, I think that's to create or work with the sounds, I haven't used that. And then Render over here, I'll show you that later. That's Deliver. But, so the process is you first come over here to the media on the left you pick the individual files that you want to work with and, to, and put them into a bin. That means that it's easy to work with. Then you have two ways of going. You can either then go directly to creating a timeline and pull your files down to it, put it in it and trim them at that spot. Or the new thing I found last night is you can do that right here and I'll do some of that. Once you've got your thing ready in your edit or your timeline editor, you then go to render, and then you do, that's where you create your video. After you're done editing, right? Well, certainly you would, you yeah. would do that after you're done. So you yeah. would go do all your editing here. So let's, let's just take a look at here. Here's this particular video is a motorcycle that we found on the streets of London, which is really kind of neat when you take a look at it. So I'd like to use the video from this here, but what I want to do is I want to start it here mark in, but let's see, well, how far does it go? Maybe I want to end about here. At that place, I do a mark out. Now you see how this goes like this? That what this is saying is that when I drag this video onto my timeline, this is the only part of it that it'll use. Why don't you demonstrate that? I'll, I will demonstrate that. <laughs> oh, let me demonstrate that. So if I take the motorcycle. You're going to editing mode. I'm, I'm, I'm now in the edit mode, which is the time, which is the showing the timeline. What happened to it? Oh. You click on the drag. Now, as you recall, that's all it's showing. And as you recall over here, there's more after this. I mean, it goes into here and it shows 1947, which is must be the name, the number on the building. But in the timeline, since I marked it here, it's only using the part that I marked in and out. Mark in and mark out, I've learned, are terms that you're marking where you want to go into the video and where you want to come out of the video. So wherever, whatever time marker this is right here, which is 18 seconds and three compared to time marker. Oh, that's how long the whole thing is. Someplace in here, it shows what the, this is it new, entire, it does here. Yeah. It shows the whole thing here, but down here, anyway. Am I being clear? Yes, I think so. Yes. Okay, so <laughs> I, thank you. I've, the coffee is good this morning. The, um, <laughs> next is, the next is the guard parade. Now. Uh, if we take a look here. Steve? Yeah. So for example, that uh, shot with the, uh, with the uh, <clears throat> tricycle, uh, you have, if you wanted to add an audio of your own description. Yep. Uh, where, how do you do that? There was a, yep. you know, that That's uh, right over here. You see there is a soundtrack associated with it. Yeah. I can add another one underneath here. 
and mm -hmm. it has a, a microphone. I mean, essentially, no. how do you add your own voice to it? I mean, you would have to record your voice. This mm -hmm. doesn't. Rec this does not create media. This puts media together. Okay, so you have to create a track, uh, yes. save it someplace, yes. and then br and then bring it in. That's okay. correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me do one more of those here with the uh, guard parade. Oh, I'm going to do the uh, guard parade. So it comes in as um, at about 33 seconds. I took notes. By the way. There. Let's take it about here. I'll mark in here, and then they go by until about a uh, minute and 25. And stop it about here, mark it out. Because if you take a look and see. Where, where did you see a minute 25? Where's the number? Oh, I see it. Okay. And then if you go over here, you see, I mean, you know oh they're so happy and they're walking away now they're going to go spend their money someplace um, and nobody's wearing masks because this is last fall <laughs> so I've marked in and out here so now let's come over let's come over to the timeline and I brought this in but I don't want it so I'm going to click it right now so I'm going to click it and I'm going to delete it for the time being and first thing I want to start off with is uh, as I showed you on the other is my title which is my, um, this, uh, that's the MP4, which means it's a video and I copy that down here. And that's this guy here. And I wanna bring some music underneath there. I'll do that in a minute, but um, at this point I wanna add a title. So I go over from media pool up to effects library and from effects library down to titles. So I can also have video transitions and I'm gonna do some of these and audio transitions you can do a fade from one video one audio to another i'm going to do a title there's also generators where i can generate a solid color like as a background and effects that i haven't used but titles if i want to have a text title and i just copy it down there it is now that means it's on the timeline and you see the word title comes up this is the side on the right here where I'm going to be making edits on that. It's called the inspector. And I extend it all the way down. Now I don't want it to say title. I want to say our little video just for you. And if I don't like the way the appearance of the text is, I can come over here and choose another one font another font yes and um i always tempest sands is nice we'll try that one if i want to have it centered and if i want to make this bigger i come down here it's currently 128 and then just for you but now a problem with this is that you see that it's white on top of white so you can come down to drop shadow and I find that a four and a negative four. Mm. See how it puts the shadow on there. So now it stands in front of what's behind it. It becomes like a 3D. Okay, Steve. Yeah. So going back to my question here, instead of saying our little video just for you, if I wanted to say that, in other words, I'm thinking in terms of making a slideshow. Okay. You want to have some voiceover. Voiceover of, of my own voice to describe the scene or whatever. Uh, so I would have to create a bunch of files for each slide. Here's, uh, here's what I would suggest. Here's how I would do it. First of all, I'd put together my slideshow. Side, 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 side. And into a movie here okay. on this screen right here. Okay, then what I would do is I would take the cursor back to the beginning. I would take a microphone and a tape recorder. Okay, I have devices for that. I would take something like, like this. 
which this is a, a task cam. I also have a Zoom. This lets me record with the microphones in the top a, an, an audio. I would record that as, turn it on and play the slideshow, then record me talking as I'm watching the slideshow. Once I do that, I take the audio from the device, copy it into my bin and put it underneath here okay. because that way it'll be linked up directly with the slides. You know, I, I can think of an easier way. Everybody's got a beautiful uh, smartphone and with recording there you go. capability, right? It's much easier. You just record it on your uh, smartphone as you are looking at but, your uh, but, slideshow. But I spent yeah. money for this. I got to put this to you. You're right. You're very right. <laughs> yeah. And then you, you guys know exactly how to upload that soundtrack and, and you know over this way a little close and and soundtrack and then just upload to your computer and so you don't have to learn anything new or buy an expensive uh, equipment well, uh, and it's I synchronized think. and it is synchronized well, it would be because you'd be talking you'd start it yeah and you would, would say ready set go and then you start the thing start the video playing like we can do right now B besides you can you can also See, add wait, it wait 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 a second okay uh-huh so I'd be talking right now and recording it as it's going on. Okay. And, and you can also uh, add your soundtrack as well if, I, if there's a glitch somewhere, right? Well, there's, there's some editing you can do. Yes, you can yeah. do editing. Mm -hmm. uh, so what, whatever, I mean, I, I come back to iMovie because that's the one I've used. And it, has, it was certainly easy to put a narration in beside my iMovie collection of slides and uh, film, a video. So I had a mixture and I just put it up and told the story as it went by and then did my publishing. I guess that's what they call it in iMovie, what you call rendering. Uh, yep. But it, it was very straightforward, George, not, not okay. hard at all. Okay. Yeah, see, I think the, the, the difference between consumer level things like iMovie, which are great, and I use, that's mostly what I use. And this is that this is very powerful it's a uh, it's it's professional almost professional quality, and so um, uh, I, I highly recommend that if you have never done video before, you start off with something like iMovie until you reach its limits, and then you know that this is this wonderful system is available for free to take you beyond iMovie. Um, now, if you don't have iMovie because you're not a Mac person, there are other things on PCs. Okay. Of similar, uh, of similar simplicity slash complexity as iMovie. And, and, and the other thing, other comment I'd make is if you're trying to do a slideshow with narration, there are many, many programs out there that do just that. And they do it very well and they produce MP4 videos. So be careful that you don't start rederiving the equations as opposed to just buy one or find one thing that'll do a pretty good job of doing a slideshow for you. Doesn't, doesn't PowerPoint have a, a narration capability? I mean, I yes, think it does. I, I, quite straightforward, too. Yep. The problem with PowerPoint is that after about 50 slides, it gets slow and, and it gets cumbersome, at least in my, my experience. Try using Google Slides. It's, it's lighter weight. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Harry, you're, you're really talking about the, the, the piece that's important that uh, we're, we're glossing over is the synchronization of the uh, of the video and the audio. It's it's tricky. And if you automate it, as you suggested, it takes all that out of it, because if you're off by a little bit, it really looks and, and, and feels kind of funny when you're done. And it's a lot of work to truly synchronize it. Now, right. uh, you know, talking about that, uh, what I've done while we were chatting here is I've added a second title here that tells when it was <clears> produced, <throat> used uh, so that if you watch what I was, if you watch what I was doing, and I also pulled down this audio here. This is a movie studio and logo fanfare. I'll play for mm -hmm. you in a second. But the the deal here is that you can see the waveform for that. Right. You can see it dies out here, which is it, it's, oddly enough, it's the right length. <laughs> mm -hmm. So if I were to play this now, it's by luck, <laughs> yes, so by engineering luck. So 
So we, we got a fairly I, I decent. I want to see a lion roar. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anybody got a cat? The next video. Anybody, anybody got a cat? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so now we now let's pull down the uh, the cycle, the motorcycle we had, and that would go. I'll put it right in. Uh, I'll put it right here. No, I, yeah. Okay, I'll put it mm -hmm. on like this, and. Um, now you can hear the sound from the people talking in the area. We'll take care of that in a minute. Are you going to get into transitions? Oh, by the way, I worked at Avid for technology for 10 years and we did That's good software all this too. stuff. I'll take this sound all the way down so we won't hear it anymore. We don't need the people talking. Um, now, if we want to have a transition right here, we would go over here to effects library, video transitions, and um, a cross dissolve might be very nice right here. So now if we go, I'm going to mute this one now, just so it won't be too loud. Yep, nice. Okay, it's it's so so. I I might um, pull down here about half a second, which would be around twelve, and pull down here around twelve. What I'm doing here is I'm dragging. You see how it, the shadow goes up and comes down. I'm uh, putting a, a video fade there. So now, if you watch it. Nice. And I think I don't need this transition here because I think it's going to come right in. Now, maybe I want to have a fade here. Yeah, it might. Mm -hmm. Okay. Beautiful. Better. Yeah. Okay. Um, I push the save button. And um, I can also uh, push it away so I have more space. What I would put after this would be the uh, parade. So, so how, how do you push it back to more space? Oh, okay, that brings you back to the um, uh, place where I showed you the, uh, the tips that I have. For me, I'm pushing the, uh, it's, actually it's the op, alt button and I'm zooming in. I'm pushing the button up. I'm holding the alt button down, or for me, it's the option button, and I'm I'm cursoring up on the mouse. Can't show you. Okay. I'm cursoring down. So I'm looking at it as I'm pushing it away from me, so I have more showing, and I'm pulling it towards me, so I have a, a closer view. And that's the alt uh, button on the uh, PC. Well, I, mm -hmm. I imagine it's the alt on the PC. I don't know for sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now. Um, at this point, it uh, might be nice to put some music in here. And I'll come down. What I was using was the... Uh, let's goof around. I was using let's goof around. And let's see how that sounds. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Okay, I won't uh, belabor that, but that's the music I, I think I'm going to use for the this particular video. Mm -hmm. Any questions so far? Make sense? Steve, so, can you de can you delete the uh, the motorcycle sound, or you just had to uh, minimize it? You know, bring it down to zero. Um, you can, but uh, that may also um, we can you can disable the clip. Mm -hmm. Okay. The soundtrack. Yeah, I disabled the click. I also took the volume down. The so by the fact, oh. yes. So now it's grayed like this one here, which means it's muted. See the M for muted. And mm -hmm. if I unmute this, and I'm going to make it less loud. So. Okay, so you see, we got something going here. And let's see what we're going to do after that. I'm going to do the parade. And that would be the guard parade. And I copy it down here. Now, it's also got sound, and I don't think I want that. Let's see if I can. Yes, I can disable that. So 
it's not showing and I'll just make the sound out so I don't have to worry about it. And I'll zoom out a little bit. <clears throat> At this point, we're gonna be going from, I'll mute this. We're gonna go from here to here and that's kind of sudden. So I'm gonna pull a transition in there from the effects library. Uh, video transition, I'll do a cross dissolve. There, bring it closer so we can see. And what it does is it puts this thing and it's gonna do a cross dissolve between them, watch. Mm -hmm. Now, um, uh, this is a, a parade that lasts from 29 seconds to a minute, it's almost a minute long, you know, and I know that some people watch this, they're going to get kind of, oh, actually, we want the music for the guard parade. But in that event, we, we might want to um, speed things up. Okay, we're going to take mm -hmm. the cut. We're going to take the cut down here. We're going to cut this video right like this. I wanted this on, by the way that links these two things, lets these two things be linked together. So I had now have, you can see one clip here and another clip here. It's the same thing. And if, if I play, bring it closer across, you see that there's no difference. The speed, right? Oh. No difference, but oh. it's, a, it's, a, it's a different thing I can work with. And now I can come in here and I can change the clip speed. Now it's currently this, this is this particular selected clip and you see the arrow pointing to it. It's currently at hundred percent then it's at 24 frames per second because that's what all these movies are coming in at 24 frames per second. Okay. And um, what I can do is I can, I want a ripple sequence and I want to make it faster. I want it to really be marching by. How about I have them go one and three quarters times faster? Okay, now if I change it, you see it gets shorter. And now let's see what happens when I play it. <laughs> so that's not fast enough. Um, I know some people are gonna be really uh, bored with all that marking going on. So I'm gonna really speed this up and get them out of here really fast. I'm arbitrarily choosing, choosing arbitrarily choosing even why, numbers. Why not cut out the center of this and do a cross dissolve between? Yeah, that's what he did. No, it's not what I did. I just did a cut. What he's suggesting is that. Cut the space, yeah. I have them here. Right. So why not put a cut here? Yeah. I don't have to put a cut. What I can do is I can drag this one back. I can take this one over. And now I can add my cross dissolve down here. By the way, I'm clicking on this and dragging it down. So you're calling that like overlay or something? Uh, it's a cross dissolve uh -huh. video transition. Mm -hmm. And now if you take a look here. So how's that? You know, it looks a little 1920s. <laughs> <laughs> what happens to the audio as you change the video speed? Does it, it, I can turn that back on. In fact, I do want to turn. Oh, I, I cut here and I didn't cut here. I'm going to undo my things here. Because I also want to cut down in the bottom here. And now I want to go back to my arrow. See how it, now it drags both of them. It didn't before because this was not cut. And if I pull like this, and I pull like this, and if I unmute these things here, enable. No, how do you, how do you unmute this one? On the side, the button, mute button. I got it. Mm -hmm. So I'm muted here, sound. Why am I not hearing it? Oh, because I got the volume turned all the way down.
uh, what happened was I changed the speed on this one, but I didn't change the speed on this one. Steve, when you, were, cha Steve yeah. when you change the speed, is it cutting out frames or is it playing them faster? Faster. But I don't know exactly how it's doing it. Because it seems so, as, as Charlie said, the 1920s, it seems like there are fewer frames, so it gives it that uh, staccato kind of walk. Because 60, 60 frames per second is smooth motion. What did I do for this one here? Your playback seems to stay at the same number of frames, but there are uh, more frames being squeezed in, so you're cutting frames. Okay, I'm going to delete these two and re-put them back down. They can, when you're shortening or lengthening audio, you can you can do it without frequency scaling. Okay, we're going to just stop here for now. Okay. So we have our parade, we have the music that goes with it, we have the part in the middle we wanted to get rid of. And let's cut it right here, pull it in closer. Cut right here. And good, it cuts both. Now we want to And right here, we'll just take it to here, take it and pull it. Now this is the standard, standard speed. We want to change the clip speed. We wanted to knock that up to 250. It changes both of them. I saw a pitch correction turned on. Okay. It becomes it becomes humorous. Yeah. <laughs> yes. They become the Keystone Cops. <laughs> I added audio and video transitions. Okay. There's a very useful uh, undo button. Uh, what yes. was it on this? Sure. Um, it's. Uh, well, you know, what is it, uh, Alt-Z? I use Control-Z, Control or is it Command-Z, Z, which must be Control-Z. Uh -huh. I'm not exactly sure what it does in the PC. It's, it's uh, Command-Z, and on it Apple. undoes, undoes. On Apple, yeah. Another interesting thing about uh, marching bands and music is that the music doesn't have to have anything to do with the marching band as long as you're not doing close-ups. Um, and, or, or you see lips, uh, uh, moving so that you're, you, you get very thrown off if, you, if, if that's not correct. But for big, large settings like that, you don't have to worry about the synchronization that much. Correct, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. a, qu a question now, um, that music, mm -hmm. it was publicly heard by uh, spectators. Yes. So I assume there is no infringement of any uh, you know, rights or legal issues if you play it. If this was inside a auditorium, let's say, and um, the music was played by orchestra, then that would could be uh, copyrighted? I believe, I'm not the lawyer, but I believe yeah. that. That all depends. Depends on whether they say that you can't um, Record which most I mean if it's a professional orchestra I'll bet you they'll tell you you can't. It's eleven o'clock. Okay, but if it's out in the public, if, if it's in the public domain, it's in the public domain. Then you can use it for for your purposes. Again, don't try to sell it without checking further into the copyright aspect. Okay, but of whose? I mean, let's say a marching band, a Lexington High School marching band plays. Uh, a certain tune as they march Patriots Day. Right. Uh, and it's a piece that's well known. Right. Uh, you know, who do you ask for permission? You don't have to ask anyone. They're out there doing a public performance. They're not telling you you can't record it. You okay. go ahead and record it, use it for your purposes. Um, a lot of the marching band music, um, 
since both Jonathan and I are, are both in the Bicentennial Band, we talked to Jeff a lot. Um, a lot of that music is, has uh, gone out of copyright. For, you know, the old, old marches are no longer in the copyright sphere. Okay. So, you know, it's, uh, your, your, your concern is, is good, um, but I've found that most people who are using it for their families, or for just general purposes, don't have to worry about the copyright aspect that much, except if you're taking it from some source, which tells you when you when you get that source how they want you to use it. Then you have to be concerned. And Dick, does it make a difference whether you paid or did not pay to uh, to to enjoy the performance at the, in the first place? Now, that's a good question. Um, oh. Yeah, hey, probably. Hey, how are you? Thanks for calling if, back. If, if um, you were to pay I, for it, I'd be more concerned. Can you can you mute your phone, please, whoever's talking? Did you hear what I said, Peter? No, sir. Um, sorry. Um, if if you paid for it, I I would be more concerned about whether you can use it for other purposes. Usually, in that situation, um, they're trying to protect that uh, that particular performance. And I would bet that they are video uh, recording that performance for, for future use, say on PBS or something like that. In which case, no, you, you, shouldn't, you shouldn't try to infringe on that. I'd like to back us off. I'd like to finish up some more on the video. And um, I think the whole topic of copyright is, is a very good one, by the way. Uh, uh, but I wanted to bring up another thing. I brought up another video here. Uh, this one happens to be Stonehenge. And uh, I put some music underneath it. I'll play later, but I did a transition to it. And I don't want the sound here, so I'll get rid of that. Now, what's important here, I'm gonna be doing something here, is that from one point here, and this is an interesting technique I'm gonna be doing here. I think it's there. Now, at this point, I'm going to bring it in closer so that I can work on it. I'm gonna cut here because I wanna deal something with this. Now, what I wanna do is on this particular one here, actually, there, on this one right here. Now on this guy right here, I can click on here and I have something called dynamic zoom. And I turn it on here I've clicked on here, dynamic zoom, and then I click on here and I choose dynamic zoom. And it goes, um, which way does it go? It goes red, it goes, oh, green to red. So what I wanna do is I want to zoom in on one of red, right? You need to move the red first to grab the uh, column, Steve. There you go. And now I can make it even small, make it even zoom in even more. So now what will happen here uh, to get the, uh, the sound off, because I don't want the people talking right now. Okay, that's a little bit too fast. So let's go over here and let's change the clip speed. And we're gonna make it go much slower. Uh, not even much slower enough. <laughs> Nice. You might want, you might want to, um, the green frame, you might want to move so don't, a little bit. No, I'm just smaller. zooming in. Okay. I, no, the, way, the, reason I, the reason I did it exactly the way I did it here was mm -hmm. because right at this spot here, I have this guy and this guy. And you see that they're at the same place. If I were to change where that outside box was, 
it would immediately jump to that spot here. So we'd see it looking like this. And then in the next frame, we'd see it like this, which is an uncomfortable jump. By leaving this green being the whole thing, you don't see the transition. Okay, I mean, you see it going into the zoom. Can you move that red frame up? up I don't need there. to. Okay. What I wanna do next is, I'm gonna come over here and do one more thing. I'm gonna turn this off, I don't need the color. Okay, and one more thing here. Come in real close and I'm gonna clip. Okay, that's fine. I'm gonna come in even a little closer. Now, this is basically one frame. And I think what I can do is I can do a freeze frame. And if I'm not mistaken, I can uh, zoom it and make it bigger. This is a little bit something, what I want to be able to do is to take this and uh, there's gotta be a better way to do it, but. <laughs> okay, and I lost the, uh, the zoom as a result. What I was trying to do, and I'll do it in another way. Whoops. And I've lost that one too. Do, do control Z. Oh, there it is. Uh, oh, it did. It just, it jumped me to another spot. Okay. Um, what I wanted to do was to grab this last frame. And uh, since I want to leave some time for questions, uh, I'm going to go over and show you the version that I worked on. Question? And uh, we can talk about that. So what I would be doing here at this spot would be to, and I've lost even the, uh, the, re, the correct zoom. Apologies for that, um, but I would want to zoom in and then hold it on that. Get it to you, and then uh, before we add new things, because I'm not taking notes now, and I want to make okay, sure I get this. Can correct. you mute okay. your machine, please? Whoever's talking. So, um, what should I do here? I'm going to go to my other, the other video. Now that I've shown you these things here, and uh, that was the demo V1. And at this point, you can, we should be able to see, there's the parade, and I did some other things with that. And then this would be the, mute this one. Yeah, I did a better job of zooming here than I've done this morning. And I did a freeze. I was able to do that. I don't recall how I did that, but obviously you can do that. And then I added another one after that, which is a passing by. And then I have some other things coming up, uh, but I have uh, bouncy music going on along this. Um, nothing, nothing special here. Uh, here I have um, interesting food and an overlay on that. And then after that, we have a, He's uh, doing some of this and I sped that up because I didn't want to, that to go by too long. And then I have a tower that has a, a guard at the bottom. So I pretty much applied all the techniques I've done so far. Um, on this one here, I also froze the frame on the, the guy with a thank you for watching. And I think I'm pretty much done. I can play you this one if you'd like. Would you like to see what, uh, what it end, is that I can do, do here? End, end product. The end product. And then I will generate it. Go for it. Okay. Hope it's not too loud. speed.
how the time is marked moving along here. You know me with so right here, I've done. I just wanted to show we can slow things down. It doesn't necessarily work too well. So uh, when I was even doing the text here, I did some zooming on that. That's why it slowly came in. Any questions? Yes, uh, Steve, um, the sound is quiet at times and louder at times. How do you equalize the sound for the whole video? It, I, I know what you mean. Um, I would individually go and uh, equalize the individual channels. Wait, where's the function to? It's right here. Yeah. No, it won't be as loud. Mm. That type of thing. And then over here, I, this was also kind of loud. So um, knock them down. This is a bit loud. Knock them down. So let's see how this goes. How do you here. do that? You click, you oh, click I, I, and then. No, no keyboard here. Uh -huh. I just come up to here and you see the up down. Yeah. And then I click down on the mouse and I drag. Oh, you drag up and down. Okay. Yes. All right. Yeah, that's a. Save it. And I, now, now, now that I've done, are there any questions on what I've produced here? Because I want to go through and do the uh, generation. Steve, just as a, just as a general question, I suspect there might be one or two YouTube videos that uh, give you some some uh, how tos in terms of using this tool. Dozen. There are dozens of them, and I've used them in many cases to help me accomplish things. Yeah, I just want, I, I thought that was true. I just want to make the point, in case anybody was thinking of using this tool or another tool, that there are probably a ton of uh, YouTubes that can help you do whatever you want to do. Stephen, there weren't a thousand. I actually went to YouTube and counted them. There were uh, 20. There were almost a thousand videos on this. Yes, and I think uh, I have... Da Vinci videos for me to watch. And I've collected some here. This is my, the wiki page. And these are the various ones that tell, and I added some of these. Uh, in fact, that was uh, from you, Jerry. I put these in. <laughs> so now. So Steve, uh, what methods have you used? What mechanism are you? To learn result, this this well, there's, there's so many buttons and things to to remember. Are, do you use a user manual, or do you use a, or do you just kind of thrash about? Thrashing about is pretty good. Uh, what I I found there are a number yeah. of videos here, um, and in fact, it's probably going to be even worth it for me to do to take a look video editing a minute. I've watched some of these, full tutorial, complete tutorial, beginner hero hero tutorial. I've when I've had a need to understand, I worked on uh, other software, uh, which I mentioned, which was uh, Sony Vegas. And when I got into this, I needed to understand some of what it did. And I watched some of these videos. Once again, wiki.toku.us. And if you look for uh, Da Vinci. So while we're doing this, let me come over here to the, the generate. And um, 
I'm currently on the, the one right here, and now I'm getting ready to generate myself a video. What's especially interesting is that I can generate it and have it automatically go up to YouTube. So this is describing what I want to do with the video. And when I produce this particular program as a video, I will be coming here and publishing it up to YouTube. And I, uh, this is where it comes from and where it's going to go to and what its file name will be. It's going to be full HD and all, and I put a description in and then I tell it to directly upload to YouTube because the software here knows how to log in as me. For what I'm going to, you can go to Vimeo and other, I'm going to do a just plain custom. And I'm going to call this, um, uh, let's see, demo uh, third try, just to give it a unique name. I'm going to render the, I'm not going to do individual clips. I'm going to make it as one clip. Video is going to be quick time. This is the defaults full frame rate is about 24. I'm restricting the quality to 10,000, 10 megabits per second. I haven't tried others. I haven't tried many of these other settings here. So once I am done, I add to render crew to add to render queue. And then I start to render. Now, this is about a two minute video. And it'll be interesting to see as it, it's going to play the video as it does it so I can watch it. And it's currently generating a file. Steve, why do you uh, pick QuickTime? Because it's the default. I can check and see if there are other options. QuickTime is a format. It is not necessarily saying you're going to play it back on Apple. <laughs> no, I understand yes. that. The, the thing is when, when having downloaded uh, if it comes in QuickTime, then you have to pull it off and then convert it to something else. And every time you do a file conversion, you lose a little something. I've used it medically. People put things up in QuickTime and then I have to convert it to, to, to like an MP4 or AVI format and then, you, you, and then show it. It's just one more step in the process. Well, the, uh, any video converter ultimate will do. Yeah, oh, they're, oh, they're all free, but it's just one However, more pain in the next step. Okay, well, when we're, we're uh, done with this, which shouldn't take too long, as you can see, there's four seconds remaining. So the whole thing is taking about a minute. And when it gets done, it's interesting, it takes the most amount of time here. There, it's done. What other options were there? AVI, you wanted AVI. MP4. MP4, yeah. AVI and MP4 are the most common. Right. AVI play? is older, MP4 has a little more data on it. Do you want me to, well. No, I understand yeah. it now, I understand okay. it. Then if we go to, let's see if I have the files around. Someday. Steve, do you know anything about the H.264 codex, what that means? Um, other than that it's a standard and that it's uh, currently active right now, I, I'm really not that familiar with what it is. It's a web, a web friendly standard for websites. And uh, it has a standard within HTML now. Like, so, that, does it relate to what, to what, like Dolby or any of the 5.1 or, or 7.1 uh, renderings in terms of? Uh, the, those, are, those are a separate matter entirely. Okay. So is this essentially like a file converter in the sense that if you download a QuickTime and then you publish it as an MP4, you download it a QuickTime format and, and you, if you upload it as an MP4, isn't that a file conversion? If you download it as an MP4. You, down, no, you download a QuickTime file, but you want to publish it as an MP4. You have to convert it. It must it to, do the internal file conversion. You, it has, you have to somehow convert the file. It's but it must do that. It, this? Yes, yeah. because, because you just blankly pull it off of, uh, let's just say, YouTube, and the format will be whatever it is. That's exactly, I, that's exactly the point, Jerry, right? Some yeah, people yeah. put stuff up in MP4. Some people put right. AVI. But, the, but if you take a clip that's, uh, right, Peter, exactly. But if you take a clip that happens to be QuickTime, and you want to publish it at MP4, it, it must do somehow by magic, the file conversion. Well, whoever's publishing it as, was going to do that. Steve's uh, doing it. 
these yeah. programs these programs contain modules that do that. Yeah, right. that's what it looks like. Yeah, they're internal. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's what some of the codexes are because I know from time to time, if I've tried to play things, it says you don't have the codex for it, so you got to download a codex that essentially is a a, a a translation file or translation mechanism. You do need the codex, and you do need some kind of uh, a mechanism that can use the codex. It's called a plugin. Asked and answered. Generally, generally generate MOVs. It'd be interesting to see what the difference in size. Um, I don't know how well, many of you have been to Stonehenge, uh, but the, you know, big change in accessibility over time. And if yeah. you let, if yeah. you let me uh, uh, share my screen for a minute. Okay, hold on a second. Let me just see how this ends up. I want to see what this size comes out with. Because I've generated two versions of it. Was that Harry? No, no that was uh, Charlie. Uh, I've hey, generated two versions. Hey, Charlie, of have you been there during daylight savings time watching him move the stones? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, I just want to finish up here. Then I'll, I'll turn it over to Charlie Char so you can show about Stonehenge. Charlie, you, you're absolutely right. Uh, last fall we were there and they would not allow anybody getting closer to it because uh, well, the ground is being um, sunken in, I guess, gradually over the years. Yeah, but on one of the videos I have, there's somebody in there. You can see him. I think you can see him right no, there. No, that's on the so other I, side. Okay. A, Any uh, event, uh, then it's a different video that I have that shows someone in it. But yeah. uh, looks like I can do two different versions, an MOV and MP4. It looks like they come out to be about the same size. Mm -hmm. So anyway, um, Charlie, you wanted to show something? Wait a minute, uh, Steve? Before we do that, any Steve, questions here? Steve, before you go to Charlie, yeah. can I ask you the, the, the sub, I don't know what you call it, that picture that was on the right side, looked like, um, you know, we have the audio and video, look, there's a lot of little things that you can do here. Can you briefly describe that? What, or how you, how you use okay, all the edges on the right? This over here? Yeah, that, that, that sure. area. Well, it depends what I'm selecting right here, what I can do with it. First of all, it's in edit mode. Okay, I'm in the timeline edit mode right here. Then I have, I'm gonna pull it in closer so I can see it. And we have this particular video right here. <coughs> and these are the things I can do to it. Uh, I'm not sure what all of these are, but when they've got the red thing on, it means that they're turned on. Transform um, uh, lets me I'll undo this. I can zoom in and I can zoom out and I'm going to set it back. So, oh, I didn't know that. I could do that. I can zoom in. It it's, looks, it's a it's static not. zoom. It doesn't dynamically zoom except when I'm moving the, the mouse here. It looks like you have much more control over the over the very small details of what you're doing in your editing process. Is that correct? Yes. And then position, I can move it. Oh. Oh, this, we're in the middle of the zoom. And uh, rotation angle. Become Ken Burns. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I noticed that in the music part, you could do a lot of things to the music when you get to yes. that point. Yeah. Right here. Now we click yeah. on this. That's it. And uh, we can change, clip the volume, which I've done by 11. I can pan. I guess that means left to right pitch. Oh, semitone. I can do some of that. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff. I can room. pull out noise. For instance, if I'm recording in a room and there's an AC noise or something like that, yeah. I can, I can uh, what do they call that? When you sync it out. Filter? You're suppressing background. Filter? Yeah, yeah, filter. Uh, yeah that's it. A notch. It's called a notch filter. Let's see. And then there are all kinds of commands yeah. up on the top here. Yeah, the bands at the bottom with different frequencies, it's amazing. Now, over here, um, I only talked about a couple of these. This is the selection mode, and this is the blade edit. So if I wanted to come down here, and I already did that, if I want to edit right here, I could do that. Yeah, that's a tool that you One can the tool. edit. And then I'm, editing tool. I'm not really sure what these do. I guess it lets me insert a clip. I'm not familiar with that. The ones I use here are the, which means that you might find ways of doing some of these things faster than I have found. I can select and then I cut. And I usually try to stay in the select mode so that I won't accidentally cut a video or an audio. And I use this here, snapping. 
And what the snapping does is it lets me, if I want to pull something else down here, let's pull another guard parade in here. And um, I'm going to move it up like this so it won't be on this. Snapping mode on, it gets me right over to it. But it also makes it, I'm pushing, it makes it uh, 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 tough to move it. If I turn this off, then I can move very individually. That's can what you actually is. overlay video files and audio files so they're both playing simultaneously? Um, videos are a little bit different because each one is opaque unless it's specifically set up not to be. The titles are set up not to be. The uh, audio, yes, you can overlay. And um, I actually did that in this particular video. Let me get rid of this guy here. In that um, over here, right here, I have two things going on in this particular spot. And if I mute this guy here, that's the music. Now it sounds awful because I've slowed it down. And if I turn the music back on, you can hear that too. Not too well, because it's kind of loud. So the audio gets added up and the video gets stacked up because oh. it takes things from the top down. Oh. So that if I go over here, we see here, these texts are meant to be seen through. But uh, the way the video is constructed, it, it comes from the top down. It takes this guy, which says so many, well, so full and this guy, which just has the other two lines, and I had to play a little game to get them overlining, overlaying, so to come up in the right spot. But over here, it only shows those two, and then I add that third one, and it's on top of this. If I add another video on top, we'll lose everything that's underneath it. For instance, if I bring the motorcycle back down, you don't lose it. You know. Well, if I bring the bouncy you music, know. you don't you don't lose it. What you do is you, I don't know where I went. No. If I bring the, uh, oh, I brought music down. I didn't mean to do that. I meant to bring the um, video. sunny day. Mm -hmm. So if I bring that down, you see how the video goes away? Because right. it's on top. Mm -hmm. hmm. Wow. Steve, um, can I ask a question? Please. I, I was wondering, suppose I take a picture of a fight. <laughs> And I, can you always tell whether I've edited it or not? No. I mean, if it's illegal, if I'm trying to, you know, show if you take, if what you take happened. A of somebody and uh, is there a way to find out that someone has made changes to it? It's, uh, it's not easy. Uh, there are people can do some very good editing so that it's very difficult to tell that something's been edited. Okay. If you go back to the talk that I did on deep fakes a, a while ago, yeah. it's very difficult to understand when somebody has done some editing. You can see it. You have to look for uh, disjunction in the transitions. You have to almost look, you know, pixel by pixel to see yeah, but what's if, going on. Yeah, but if you have an original, you can just oh, show yeah. this is original. This is oh right. Editing. But if if somebody is doing a deep fake, and the example we gave is uh, having people say and do things that yeah. they didn't actually say and do. Yeah. So, so the way that the, the, uh, that's evaluated, you have to spend some time in the bowels of the actual digital, digital file and looking at disjunctions in the, in the, in the image and in the uh, audio so that it, you know, something of a background noise suddenly it's changes. It's 1130, right. And right. You, know, you know that there was a cut that was made there or if a video suddenly changes between mm -hmm. two frames, that means there was a cut there. Yeah. But it's very hard to do. It's something you can't just look at easily and say, oh, I, I see I see what they did there. Some, sometimes you can if they do a sloppy job. I've seen some where they take a picture of a woman and they make her look quite svelte. And then you look at the posts on either side, they go like this. Because what they've done <laughs> is they, they've done a, a narrowing here, but they also forgot that there are four vertical posts that are showing that it's been modified. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh -huh. yeah. I, I, I also want to uh, share something that I learned. I, I uh, for instance, the uh, the guard 
marching piece and I could if I want to know if I want to see if I can do something different I drag initial I mean original piece on and on the uh, uh, separate track and I make an editing there and then compare two and then I maybe replace the newer version to the older version so, so that's another so it's right it's what yeah. you're talking about mm -hmm. is right here if there's something I mean, you could pull uh, you can pull a section of this maybe I just want to take one second. I got to turn him on so it'll snap I might want to take this and uh, you edit it on separately and then yeah you could insert or and what will happen is yeah. it's gonna I, I was just thinking because what I thought of is the the video showing crimes against blacks and would it be possible to seamlessly edit them and make it look the events look quite different than they did and I'm sure that I'm sure that they can uh, I've seen or can you tell that they haven't been edited you know there that's are called MSNBC <laughs> there are allegations that police have done selective editing and it's very difficult for juries to determine whether that has been done. Yeah, there's been lots of stuff. There was, there was uh, an early one in the campaign where I think uh, the Republicans uh, took a, a clip of Nancy Pelosi and slowed it down so it seemed like she was slurring. Yeah. Yep. You know, that, that, was, that was made infamous. So that's, that's the kind different. of thing that can be done. That one was very easily detectable because of the change of speed. Yeah. And then they also did, uh, I think, a four cuts of uh, Joe Biden, and then, you know, to 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 say that he is a sleepy Joe, or you know, or he uh, agrees with the, uh, uh, you know, far left. Is, so yes, there is some yeah. video manipulation that you can do. That's right, for sure. Right. Uh -huh. If you want to, if you really want to get into it, you just Google deep fakes, and yep. there's a there's a billion things on the internet that you can see, and, and they talk about some of the software. In fact, there's been some a lot of serious research that's been done in terms of technologies for it, because there are, are there there are pluses and minuses. I mean, the movie industry does it all the time. Yes. I think uh, De Niro, I think, was aged using CGI, or, or made younger in CGI in uh, The Irishman, you know, which is ba essentially a deep fake. Do we no, I want to point out deep fake F A K E. Yeah, deep. correct. Gemini in Gemini to Gemini Man, uh, um, uh, Will Smith plays himself age 51 and plays uh, his son. And there's yeah, a, lot so of, it, a lot of deep faking with that. Uh, yeah, they call it CGI in the movie stuff, but it's all part of, it's all the same well, technology or similar. There's a difference here. Um, with regards to what they did for having him appear as two different ages, that's called makeup, I believe. No, they so did it no, it wasn't. Steve. It was it was computer imaging. It was digitally. Well, it, w it wasn't makeup. On deep fake is I've seen it where you can have uh, Obama saying whatever you want him to because they've studied Obama's facial movements, and then somebody speaks and it takes those words and puts it on his face. So Correct. He's saying, and it's your voice that he's saying, or whatever if you can mimic him. Uh, that's beyond this. Uh, I did want to say one more thing about this, and that is I've only scratched the surface on this. I've been able to produce quite a few movies using the capabilities I've discussed and uh, documented on my um, Annoyances wiki page. But there are also, this is also very well known software for being able to modify color or taking a snapshot of your screen uh, of what's of a given image. You can do that in here. And there are other capabilities. Um, it might be to do other things that I'm not aware of. Right. Okay. Any other questions? Because I think we should. Uh, bring this to a conclusion, and then we can take a Check. look at what Charlie has. <laughs> Any other questions? Good job, Steve. Thank you. It was really Thanks, interesting. Steve. Great. Uh, excellent. Thanks, Steve. Excellent. Thank you, Steve. Thank you for your interest and your questions. That was very good. Thank you.